Hi, I'm Casey. I'm a 90s kid, and I grew up in that kind of strange in-between time where the internet was very much new and exciting, but not quite accessible. When I was about eight or nine years old, internet services had evolved to the point where we could surf the web without having to tie up the phone's landline. And around that time, I discovered a freeware website called Beyond, or as I grew up calling it, Beyond. The site was entirely free to use, which was good because my prepubescent self was in no position to fork up cash for anything, let alone online video games. Beyond, which is essentially a dead site by now held up by the Frankenstein's monster that is Space Station 13, which I will add I played a ton of when I was a kid before the source code was obtained and modified into oblivion, but I digress. The website had some very fun, albeit janky, pixel art based games on it. The site offered its own proprietary game engine free to use to all who were interested, and all of the projects on the site were made by other members. It was during my time on Beyond that I discovered a game called Rise of Heroes, an action RPG set in a fictional world where you could pick your class, name your character, and you were off to the races. The classes were super basic, with four of them ranging from all melee to all magic with two transitional classes in between. Melee was triggered literally just by walking into the enemy, while magic was a little more involved, but you could just set up macro keys to cast spells that you wanted. You spawn next to a cave with the most basic gear in the game, and you were cut loose to explore, fight, and die. The only penalty of death was that you would lose a small percentage of your gold, so you could get right back into the cave, kill more slimes, and grind up your level until you were strong enough to move into the next section of the game, with each section of the game having increasingly more difficult enemies in it. Prohibitively so, if you weren't up to snuff, they would literally one-shot you, oftentimes with long-range attacks that were unavoidable. That gameplay loop was addicting, and I spent many hours of my hairless adolescence killing goblins and snakes in the forests. And so here I am, 20 plus years later in my 30s, and I can't stop thinking about how much fun I had with that game as a kid. Is it nostalgia? Yeah, probably, at least a portion of it, but I do believe that other gamers like myself would enjoy a game like that if it existed on a more modern format. And that brings me to my mission, to recreate this game in a modern engine while adding my own personal touches to make it as fun as possible along the way. There's only one major hang up, and <laughs> that's that I don't know how to make video games aside from a few little projects that I would have made on Beyond back in the day when I was a literal child, I have no experience making games. This would be my first one. So I had to choose an engine and I chose Unreal Engine as my engine of choice. Why Unreal? <laughs> well, primarily because coding is scary and the visual scripting of blueprints seemed easier to learn. There's also a huge wealth of educational content out there for it, as well as a lot of free assets for developers to use. I chose a few tutorial series to follow to learn the basics of the engine, but it was very important to me that I was able to understand and learn as much as possible along the way. So I took it very slow and steady. Many wannabe game devs like myself fall victim to the process called tutorial hell, in which you just follow the tutorials, but you don't really internalize that content. And thus you never really learn anything. So you basically just become a potato when you're cut loose from the flow of information from the tutorial content. Up to this point, I've recorded almost all of the progress I've made on the project that I've dubbed Project Heroes, and I'd love to share it with you guys in this video, and more videos in the future, if you'd have them. The purpose of this devlog series will be to document the progress of the project for any of those interested in keeping up, as well as hold me accountable through the process. Because as many of you know, making video games is very, very hard. So, I got to work, I found a cool RPG tutorial series by Gorka Games on YouTube, and I followed his progress for a while. It started off pretty simple, as with most games. I got the very basics off the ground with some health, mana, experience bars. They don't actually represent anything, but they were there. And after a bit of work, I managed to get the health bar and everything working, and uh, my player would even ragdoll when they died. I then spent some time figuring out an experience system, and uh, for some reason, my player kept doing this weird ragdoll like that, and I still never figured that out. I then implemented an enemy, but uh, swinging my sword at him didn't do anything. So then I implemented a little hitbox system to detect those sorts of things. And finally, after a few hours, I was able to swing my sword and kill an enemy. And now since we could hit them, I added a little ouch effect. And then I even added a knockback effect, which was pretty cool. We then made a little screen shake effect. And I even added a little blood splatter and uh, a non-functioning health bar at this point. And once I got that health bar working, I felt like I was really finally starting to make some progress on this project. I set it up so taking out enemies would give you experience and once you hit the threshold, you would level up to the next level. And around this time was when we started working on the inventory system and that included creating items as well as picking them up. And in order to show those items, we needed to create a pause menu that uh, I could show the equipment off in. And so that was what I did next. We then spent some time figuring out an inventory slot system as well as the ability to pick up said inventory items and put them in those slots. And after some trial and error, even got stackable items. 
And this is about the time when I decided that I did not really like the direction that this tutorial series was going in, felt like I had taken everything that I needed from it, and uh, decided to find a new tutorial to learn how to do my inventory system. So we scrapped what we had and went on to the next one. Big shout out to PyroDev if you're interested in an Unreal Engine 5 inventory system. I highly recommend it. I'm going to link it in the description. He also has a very soft German accent, so mm, 10 out of 10. After a while, I decided to take a break from inventory and I decided to set up some simple algorithms to determine stat increases whenever the player leveled up. That was pretty cool to see on screen after, you know, troubleshooting that for two, three hours. But by the time I had worked up my courage to get back to the inventory system, we had really figured out quite a bit and uh, I was able to open it up, drop single items. You could even preview the items that you had had in your inventory. You could drop a certain amount of them using a slider and all that stuff. So it was really cool. This tutorial series was just awesome. And with some basic classes set up, I decided that maybe I should start working on enemies. So I set up some basic spawners that would spawn these little green blobs of goo that uh, if I could run around and do an attack on, it would kill them and then killing them would grant experience. So I had that all working. I was very happy about it. And with a little more tinkering, I had a basic AI that would spawn and chase down the player if it was within range. Most of the AI stuff was implemented from a tutorial from Ali El Zahiri. He's incredible. Highly recommend you check him out as well. And luckily for me, I was able to snag this incredible asset pack from a company called Sinti on the Humble Bundle. And uh, it is just like the most gorgeous, low poly art style I've ever seen. And I uh, actually think I may just run with it for the game. And so that was what we did. I ported us over to a preview map of one of their asset showcases, and I was just really happy with it. I ran around a little bit and let the uh, the AI chase me just to make sure that the pathfinding and the nav mesh stuff was working as I expected. And sure enough, it was. One of the packs included in this assets was a modular hero character that I have absolutely no idea or had no idea how to get working, uh, but it definitely took me some time. I eventually figured it out, but yeah. Pretty funny seeing a low poly dude running around killing slimes with uh, the, the legendary T pose. And I just thought this was super funny when I was porting over the assets to Sinti assets. One of the mobs I had assigned to the Sinti skeleton and it just did not do the re animation retargeting well, or at least I had it set up incorrectly. So they just kept laying on their back and swinging their sword up into the air. And I thought that was very funny. And it didn't get any better whenever I applied animations to myself because it just happened to me as well. So yeah, I needed to sort out that. And once I did end up getting it sorted out, I played around with a couple of the different meshes for characters and all that stuff just to have some fun. And uh, I ended up sorting out a really cool patrol system for AI mobs that you can actually assign different mobs from various spawners to those routes. And if you don't assign them to any route, they'll just wander aimlessly. And still following Ali's tutorial, you could actually set up some basic AI that would uh, get aggressive on a various command. This was just a button click, but you know, you could figure it out. They would draw a weapon, run at you, swing that sword at you. And then whenever they would lose aggro, they would sheath their weapon and go back to their patrol route if they had one assigned. I then set the AI up with some basic sight and hearing. The hearing, which they would pursue the location of the sound and inspect the area, look for what could possibly be causing it. If they find the player, they would attack them. Otherwise, they would just go back to the route. After that, I decided it was time to get started on a simple magic system. And uh, so I created a little fireball that you could throw in and it just went through everything. So yeah, clearly needed a little bit of work, but it was there. Naturally, I set it up so casting spells would cost mana. And uh, now it deducts that from the stats. And now whenever you don't have enough, it won't let you cast it. I then applied some simple collision detection to the ball to make it disappear when it hits a wall. And then even set it up with some cool sounds and a little fireball explosion effect when it hits something. Pretty cool. I then decided to create an ice bolt effect to complement the fireball effect and decided that the fireball effect would be homing. So whenever you cast it and an AI was in range, it would chase them down. Meanwhile, the ice bolt would just go straight and hit whatever it hits, but it will do more damage if it does hit. But it was during these implementations that I realized a glaring flaw in the way that I had this game set up. I wanted to do an isometric view, but the spells you could only cast in the WASD directions and diagonal possibly. So I needed to figure something else out. And while I was pondering my orb about this uh, movement thing that I needed to sort out, I set it up with the AI so they would get aggro whenever they took damage from the player and chase you down. And uh, I also made it so we now do damage to them. 
I also took some time at this time to figure out the AI hitting the player and realized, well, hey, if the AI is going to hurt the player, the player is going to need a way to replenish their stats. So I set up a very simple NPC or an innkeeper in this case that will restore your stats based on the amount of uh, missing health and mana you have and calculate a gold amount, which I also added gold. I love gold. And it was around this time I had figured out that I think I wanted to go with basically a sort of Project Zomboid sort of movement system where you hold right click and you will turn in place to face your cursor. And there was definitely some issues with that. And it took way longer than I'd like to admit, but I finally sorted it out to eventually get to a place where I felt like it was working as intended mostly. It didn't look quite so great, but you know, we were running with it for now. And all of this took me like a week and a half to figure out to get to this point. And I scrapped the project once, but at this point I really was starting to think, okay, I think I'm on to something here. Uh, it just actually felt really nice <laughs> running around and shooting fireballs at enemies while you were using what I've called the focused movement system. And then spent some time after this uh, setting up a health bar for the AIs because I actually had forgotten to do that since I scrapped the project previously and made it so my character's legs would still move while I was running around casting spells, swinging my sword. But it looked really weird because he was just casting with his arms out to the side. Still haven't figured that out. I then proceeded to have a bug that plagued me for like two whole days where I just could not figure out why I could only use focused movement one time. And it ended up being some goofy thing related to Unreal Engine and not liking it when you have the cursor shown when you're not in a menu. And so I had to come up with a solution for not showing the cursor while also still letting the player know what direction they would face if they did enter focus movement mode. So I created this very simple red triangle indicator to let the player know where their cursor is at currently and where they will face once they do right click. I think it works pretty well, to be honest with you. It's fairly non-invasive and it really does let the player know exactly where they're gonna turn. And with that mostly sorted, I figured it was probably about time I got started on an equipment system because I had actually scrapped my inventory system again because I didn't quite like the way that it turned out. So I set it up so the player would have a certain amount of strength. It would be calculated based on their strength plus an item that was equipped and then proceeded to figure out some uh, ragdoll physics for the AI when they die. But um, yeah, it was weird because Unreal Engine physics is very strange. People would just die and then slide off into the abyss spinning around and it took me another day or two to sort this out but hey while i was sorting it out i figured out a, a quick little zoom in and out with the middle mouse wheel button that way uh you know the player could get a good look at their drip if they wanted to or get a little better view of the surroundings and once i eventually sorted out those goofy ragdoll physics i uh, decided that it was time to start working on a character creator because that was something i had wanted to do from the start and uh it was gonna take me some time to figure it out. I already knew that. And it did. It took me about two whole days, but I eventually ended up with this sort of simple setup here. Um, it doesn't work quite yet. You still spawn in next to the character and run around, but it was implemented at least partially. I also had a funny thing where I wanted to make it so you could rotate your character, but um, this is what happened whenever you were clicking. It took me a little while to figure that one out. But sure enough, after a couple days of troubleshooting, I ended up with this system and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, all the parts are incredibly modular. You can spawn in as your player and uh, you've got a fair amount of customization. I also have just been tweaking the way that things feel, you know, slow down when you're in focus movement mode, kind of like in Zomboid. So yeah, I'm very happy with the way that the project has come up to this point. I also took a bit of time to figure out a rudimentary respawn system. Uh, so right now you can see you can kill a couple of enemies, get some experience. And then if you are to somehow get taken out by the enemy, you will die, but you will respawn with maximum health and keep everything else you got. You will lose a percentage of your gold, but that's about it. And so after three weeks, this is what I have to show. And I can honestly say I am very proud of it. I think that I, as a complete beginner who has never really done anything with Unreal Engine, I am very happy at how much I've been able to get done with the help of some really cool tutorials. I'll have all the relevant ones linked in the description below if you're interested in doing a similar setup to what I'm doing here. If you're interested in following along with the development of Project Heroes, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video if you do appreciate that because I really do appreciate that. If you have any feedback of anything that I showed, please leave it in the comments below. I will take all of that to heart and uh, I just want to make a good game. I think that with quite a bit of polish and quality of life and uh, quite a bit of content, this game could be very, very fun. But like I said, I'd be curious what you guys think. I'm hoping to put these devlogs out every two to three weeks, but you know, we'll see. Life is busy. But yeah, that's all I got for you. See you in the next one.